So today we're going to do the handover video on the Swift Escape 624. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. So firstly, coming over to the passenger side, you'll notice you've got your fill-up point for your diesel, which just goes into there, as you can see uh, on the cap. And then opening up the passenger side, you'll notice you've got your bonnet release catch, which is here. Uh, I'll show you how that operates. Um, just in a second, you will also see that on this model you've got some press studs uh, located in the vehicle. Um, somewhere will be um, your blackout blinds for the fronts, which will con uh, connect onto here. And then for the big window at the front, you've got Remis cab blinds installed. Simply pinch the tab to release them, and then using the magnetic strip on either side will allow them to connect into place. Now, as I mentioned, the bonnet release catch is just on the bonnet, uh, on the uh, passenger side. Pull that to release the bonnet. Now, moving round, there's not much many things that you need to know underneath the bonnet. The main things that you need to know is if you're ever going to jump start the vehicle and where they are located. So, I'll just lift the bonnet now and show you where that is uh, is done from. As you can see, the bonnet's open now. For your negative terminal, that just connects onto there, and your positive terminal. It's just loca uh, located underneath the flap here. There's a little plus sign on there uh, where it indicates um, where you can connect your, your positive terminal onto. Now coming on, or moving on rather from that, you've got your engine oil along with your uh, vehicle dipstick below that. You've then got your brake disc fluid, your engine coolant which is next to that, your power steering fluid and then finally your washer fluid which is just in there. Moving on and around the vehicle, onto the side of the vehicle brings us your LPG um, gas bottle um, locker. Opening that up now. With it open, you can see you've got your regulator already connected to the vehicle. All you will need is a pigtail to connect the uh, regulator to the gas bottle, of course. Um, and then you can get your gas bottles all tied in. Please bear in mind that when you are travelling, you don't um, travel with the gas on for safety you should only have your gas on when you are stationary of course now moving on from the gas locker this brings us on to your first drain down point of the vehicle and as indicated by the sticker on the side which says waste tank this is of course the waste drain down point um, on the vehicle so you've got three main drain down points you've got your waste water which is this grey tap here you've got your fresh water which will probably be on the other side, I need to have a look. And then finally, you'll have your uh, drain down water for your boiler um, point, and that'll be on the inside of the vehicle. They're all very important. You need to always ensure that they are correctly drained down and uh, completely drained down before moving off site um, and when not in use, because obviously if they're not, they do run the risk of freezing. In the warmer climates, they of course don't, but you've got to bear in mind that it does get you into the habit of having water emptied in the vehicle. Um, and gets you in that good practice of always remembering to empty the water uh, and making sure that nothing um, can potentially freeze. Now when you're on site you'll have a big grid that you can drive over. Once you're over that grid directly you need to turn this valve here and this will open up the tank for the fresh, uh, sorry, for the waste water allowing you to drain down everything. Now once, whilst we're on the topic of um, drain down points um, this goes for all your drain down points. What we recommend is when you're on site, drain down the majority of the water via, of course, the drain down points. And then once the majority of the water is drained, you can then travel home and all that vibration of the road will make sure that all the tank, uh, all the water in the tank rather, is vibrated out uh, to ensure it's, uh, it's empty. And of course, to ensure that there's no water um, that can potentially get frozen in the system. Uh, so as I say, moving on for your drain down point, you've got your cassette toilet up here, uh, which will open for you now. Now with the locker open, you can see it gains you access to the cassette toilet. The main thing that you need to always make sure um, that uh, before removing the cassette is that the blade on the toilet is closed. If the blade is open, what you'll do is you'll come to remove the cassette toilet. Um, it will then get caught on the blade, which will ultimately break the cassette. And as a rule of thumb with anything in a motorhome, is if it feels like it's being forced, you are probably doing something wrong. So just bear that in mind. So, when you're ready, pull up on the orange tab and simply slide out like so, and that will release this cassette. So with the cassette out, all you need to do to empty it is simply turn uh, the, um, the funnel like so, remove this grey cap on the end, 
and then using the orange button on the back side of the, uh, of the cassette that will release an internal vacuum which will allow you to empty the contents of the cassette out. Once you've done that you can put a bit of water in here to swill it out uh, and then you can put obviously the cap back on. Worth mentioning that in the cap you have got a little measurement so if you are using blue fluid or toilet chemical that can go straight into there um, and it provides you enough um, and a decent measurement for what you're going to need. Um, finally you'll notice that you have got this orange um, uh, clip that obviously turns just like so. This is what makes contact with the blade when opening and closing the cassette. This should always remain in this position. You should never need to move this. If this, for example, is off by any chance, say you've caught it, it won't allow you to put the cassette in correctly. So please bear in mind that that should always stay in that position. Okie dokie, so once you're ready to put the cassette back in, simply line it up, slide it in, and once the orange handle is sitting beneath there, you know that, you've, uh, that you're good to go. And moving to the back of the vehicle, you can see that you've got space for a bike rack should you want it. You've also got your fridge vents on the back here. As you can see, Dometic. Um, got to bear in mind that if it is a, a sunny day, um, it, your fridge isn't going to run as efficiently. So if you can, try and keep this area under shade as much as possible. Um, we'll go more onto the fridge on the inside. Uh, and up at the top, before we move on, you've got your camera system. Moving around the vehicle, you can see your habitation door uh, and your entry step is just located at the back here. You've also got a Fiamma F45S awning located on the vehicle. Um, one thing, or one rule of thumb rather with the awning is if it is windy, don't use it, put it back in. On a day like today, there's not much wind, so you'd be good to use it. But if you do get slight, a slight breeze, any indication that it's uh, gonna start um, uh, you know, blowing a gale, Put that awning back in because as you can imagine it's a massive sail that does get a lot of uh, a lot has a lot of surface area which could potentially snap and break the awning um, to operate this you've got a little handle which will be somewhere in the vehicle which just simply connects onto that you can then wind the awning out wind it out to a point that you can reach it and then there's two legs located in there which can uh, ping out and allow you to take the weight of the awning um, I'll send you a separate video on the awning so you can see how that works. Moving on, you've got your fill up point for your fresh water tank. To fill this up all you need to do is remove the cap and you using a food grade hose pipe the, the hose, uh, a hose pipe goes straight into there and you can fill up the tank. The tank will hold approximately 95 to 100 litres of water so with that in mind Stick your, uh, your um, hose pipe in and when it's overflowing, you've obviously filled the system. Next, located in here is your leisure battery as, long, as well as your, um, your vehicle uh, hookup point for your 230 volt mains electric. You can see there's just a sticker in there just to indicate. So when, if you're ever on site, the lead goes into here and you can connect it up. And as I say, your leisure battery is just next to that should you need to access it. Finally, you've then got your Troom event, which is located here. This can get very hot, so bear, do bear that in mind. Um, it's uh, almost like a chimney, um, so don't hang anything on here. But in essence, as I say, that is your chimney. Uh, now that concludes the outside. We're now going to move on to the inside. As I suspected, it looks like your drain down point for your water is uh, for your fresh water is on the inside. So the only drain down point externally that you need to worry about is your wastewater tank. Okie dokie, so we're now in the motorhome, you can see I've just come through the habitation door and as soon as you walk in, straight above the habitation door are your control panels. You've got your Truma control panel for your heating and then you've got your control panel for the actual motorhome itself, for things like the power and also battery indicators. So firstly, turn the power on and off using this power button here. Click that on. Um, to operate your cabin lights, Click cabin lights obviously and you can see that that turns the lights on in the vehicle and then if you click view levels this will then indicate your vehicle battery level it'll then show you your wastewater tank obviously we've nothing in there at the moment fresh water tank as well as well as your leisure battery which is the level i've got them mixed up that's your leisure battery that's your vehicle battery as you can see clearly indicated
Moving uh, across, you've then got your water pump. You can click that on to obviously activate your pump. Do bear in mind that the vehicle needs to be full up with water before you can uh, you can turn the pump on. Uh, if you don't do that, you'll simply burn out the pump. Now, when you're on site, obviously, firstly, make sure that you're hooked up with water and you've got a full tank of water in the system. You can then click your pump and then all you need to do is go to your taps, including your shower, and turn them on, then turn them to hot. What that will do is it'll pull water from the fresh water tank into the boiler and then out of the tap and it'll spurt and splutter initially and then of course when it's running steadily you've primed your system for the hot water. Once you've done that flick it over to cold and do the exact same and once it's running steadily you've primed your system. Now don't forget you need to do this for all your, um, all your uh, taps including your shower. Um, now the reason I tell you to put it on hot first is that will ensure that the boiler is primed um, and following that you can then turn the heating on for the water. Um, what this means is it's of course going to, it takes about 10 litres the boiler so it's going to take a bit of time to obviously get it up to temperature. So if this is the first thing you do when you're inside the vehicle and you turn your heating on which I'll show you in a minute. That will get the temperature up, uh, the water up to temperature relatively quickly. So by the time you come to use the water after 30-40 minutes you'll be good to use your hot water. Um, but as I say, coming back to this, uh, once you've uh, primed your system, you can leave your pump on, providing, as I say, you've got water in the system, because on each of your taps, you've got a micro switch, which will activate and deactivate the pump whenever you need it, like you are when you're at home. Coming back up to the control uh, panel, you've then got a frost protection bu a button. Um, what this will, in essence, do is this has got a, a tank heater on the wastewater tank. However, what I personally recommend... Um, is if it is below freezing conditions, instead of just using a frost protection valve, um, I'd sit well, or the heater rather, I'd simply just put a bucket straight underneath the side of the uh, uh, the wastewater just to ensure everything drains out correctly. Uh, and as you can see, that is pretty much the panel, and there are all your uh, levels. The only additional thing is your awning light here. Click that, and that turns on and off the awning on the outside uh, of the vehicle. Uh, so moving up across, you've then got your trimmer control panel. It's really simple, uh, the control panel for this. All you need to do is simply hold and it will turn on. Might be a little bit difficult to see on the camera, but you can see everything below the line is what you want to select. So firstly, we've got your vehicle's temperature. You can take that all the way up to uh, 30 degrees, I believe. Next, you've then got your water temperature. So you can either have that on eco, hot or boost. Eco is approximately 40 degrees and you'll use that obviously when you're washing up. Hot is approximately 60 degrees, you'll be using that when you're uh, um, when you're washing up, rather eco will be when you're having a shower. And then finally boost will in essence concentrate on heating the water. So instead of heating the vehicle itself, it'll allow you to heat the water. It allows you to do this on the other side as well, so if you wanted to um, heat the, the vehicle rather than the, the water, you can of course select the boost option. Next up, we've got an important feature. This is your fuel. So it gives you a few options. You can either run the heater off your gas. You can run it off mix one, which is a mixture of gas and one kilowatt electric. Mixture of two, and which is a mixture of gas and two kilowatt electric. EL1, which is purely one kilowatt electric. And EL2, which is two kilowatt electric. Nine times out of ten, if you're on site, you'll run it off EL2. And obviously, if you're wild camping, it'll be purely gas. The only time it's a mixture is if it's a cool bay. Uh, and you're struggling for electric power, so you may need just a little bit of oomph from the gas. Finally, you've then got your vent option. Now, at the moment, it's only giving me the option of vent, which will recirculate the air that's currently in the vehicle. The reason for that is I've not got any of these selected. However, if I had, it would give me the option of eco, high or boost. Uh, eco is a steady fan, high is a little bit more intense. And then boost, like I mentioned before, will instead of heating the water, will boost and focus on heating the vehicle itself. So it works vice versa in essence. Finally, you've then got your timer button, so you can set a timer should you want to. You've then got uh, your time, obviously on the panel that's displayed. And then finally, you have a little settings button. Through here, the main thing that you need to know is a reset button. So if you ever need to reset the panel, click here. You then uh, reset the panel, it'll flicker, and then after 20 minutes, uh, oh, well, it'll come on straight away and then just need to leave it 20 minutes and then you're good to go. Now, the only times you'll need to uh, reset the system, or the main times rather, is if you ever um, selected a fuel that you haven't got. So, for example, if you're trying to heat the vehicle on gas 
um, but you've no gas supply to the vehicle so like now i'd get an error code on here i'd need to reset it to reset it you go into that panel click reset it'll flicker the screen once once it's off it'll come back on uh, just as a normal screen it'll look like it's reset but you need to wait approximately 20 minutes um, and then you can reuse it to turn this off all you need to do is hold the uh, button in the center and eventually as you can see that will turn the system off okie dokie so next up we're moving on to the uh, kitchen area which is just by the door we've spoken obviously about your tap um, and primary system you can see that you've got your three gas hobs up at the top along with an oven and grill um, which is below that plenty of storage in this vehicle as well which is nice um, which is nice and accessible uh, next to that you've got your fridge so this is a Dometic fridge and it's a three-way system um, it, it's known as a three-way system because in essence there's three ways to fuel it so coming over to here if you click this button this will turn the fridge on next to that you've then got a little 230 volt plug so if you're hooked up to electric you can run it off 230 volt electric Next, you've got a flame symbol, and that indicates that you can run the fridge off gas. Click that if you want to uh, wild camp in the vehicle and run it off the gas. And then you've got a little battery. That's for your 12-volt leisure battery. So if you want to run the fridge off 12-volt leisure battery, click that. Now, obviously, if you're on site, you'll run it off your 230 volt. If you're wild camping, a lot of people think that they can run the fridge off the 12-volt leisure battery, but that is not the case. If it was, you'd simply burn the the battery of all of its power it will only allow you to select the battery when you're traveling because this vehicle has a built-in alternator which will um, send uh, gather power uh, and feed from the engine battery which will ultimately send it to the leisure battery and power the fridge so it'll only allow you to do that when the vehicle the engine battery is running um, if you are while camping in your stationary it needs to be gas so bear that in mind you've then got an option to change the temperature in here um, and you can also see that you've got a little exclamation mark here in a triangle. That's a, a reset button should you need to reset it. Now bear in mind you've got a freezer in here and a fridge. Um, it's not as powerful as a normal fridge. So if you want cold things in the fridge, put cold things in. And if you want frozen things in the freezer, put frozen things in there. It does a very good job at maintaining the temperature of this fridge. But not the best of jobs at getting it down to temperature. So just bear that in mind. So next up, uh, you can see that we've got the uh, toilet area. Um, so we've uh, we've covered obviously your shower and everything, um, and we've briefly mentioned outside uh, about the cassette and emptying it. To use the cassette, all you need to do is turn this blade. So push that blade away from you, like so, and that will open the cassette toilet. That will allow you. Uh, that will mean that all the waste can drop into the cassette. Once you've done that, you then need to click that blue button on the top of the toilet and that will flush the system and get rid of all the waste and, as I say, drop that into the cassette. Once you've done that, pull the blade back towards you to close it. Now, you close the blade for two reasons. You close it to firstly stop odours from escaping when uh, not in use and it'll also get you into the habit of having that closed so every time you remove the cassette, you won't run into the issue of it jamming. Now, as I mentioned, the blue button activates your flush you do need your pump pump for that to operate and it will take an element of your fresh water to flush the system. Uh, you'll also get a little red light on the top there to indicate when the uh, cassette is full as well. So we're moving on now from the, uh, uh, from the cassette toilet into your wardrobe area. You can see these are the, um, uh, the blackout blinds at the front, um, which I was mentioning that just... Uh, that just press stood on to the side of the windows. You'll notice you've got your awning pole in here as well, which is just located there. And then up at the top, you've got your aerial along with your little amplifier, which is glowing blue at the moment. To operate this, all you need to do, turn this like so. You can then push the pole up to its highest position and then tighten this back into position to obviously increase signal. If you wanted, you can swivel this, winding the aerial um, down or upwards depending on the tilt um, that you're after and that will obviously increase signal as well always make sure that that's plugged um, plugged in and obviously on to get the green uh, to ensure that it's on you need a little blue light like so that will only turn on when you've got the power on in the vehicle and then you're good to go to watch the telly so opposite your wardrobe you've got a bit more storage in here as well along with point for a TV Above that, you've got your microwave. Do bear in mind that this microwave will, of course, only work when you're plugged in to 230 volt electric. Um, so it won't work uh, if you're wild camping. 
And then all along the vehicle, as you can see at the front, you've got your storage. So we're now moving into the lounge. You can see you've got a huge lounge in this vehicle, um, which is nice and spacious with loads of storage underneath it. Now you can see by just taking up um, the, uh, the seats, gains you access to the underside of um, the, uh, the storage area, or underneath, of course, the bench seat. Underneath here, this is where your fresh water drain down point and tank is located. You can see you've got another one of them, but um, sorry, another one of those uh, stickers that indicates this. All you need to do to empty that is simply open this up, and then you've got a little cork like this that simply goes into the bottom of the tank and that will seal the tank. Obviously, to drain it, you just put your hand in there, pull it out and then it will drain down the fresh water tank. So dead easy, dead simple. Just make sure you don't lose this, keep that in a safe place if you want. Um, you can, of course, uh, buy purifying tablets for the tank, but I don't personally recommend you drink out of it. Um, obviously it is plastic at the end of the day, um, so just bear that in mind. Uh, they are, of course, sterilized, but I'd probably use drinking water. Uh, next up, You've got a charge controller here. This is just regulating charge um, into your leisure battery. Uh, on this side, you've then got your boiler. Um, and this brings us on to your final drain down point, which is a boiler drain down point. You don't need to know anything underneath here. The main thing that you need to know is if you're ever draining this system down, which of course you will be doing every time you're not using the vehicle. You can see you've got a little orange tab at the moment uh, here. At the moment, it's open like everything else on the vehicle. To close it, all you need to do is flip that down, either way, and that will seal the boiler. And that will allow you to, of course, pull the water through, and it will allow you to keep water in here. As I say, this takes about 10 litres. Obviously, bear in mind that if you haven't used the vehicle in a while, you may have forgotten about this. Um, so if you do uh, forget about it, and you try to obviously pull water through, all that will happen is water will start pouring outside the vehicle. So always remember to flick that down when in use. When not in use, flick it up to drain the entire system down. And as I mentioned on the outside, all you need to do is when you're on site, you'll have a big grid that you can drive over and you can drain down all the points on the vehicle. And as you can see, you're then back to your lounge. Now, you've got a double bed up at the top here, as you can see. And you can see that you can push this up to give you more head height when going into the vehicle. Now, of course, this area will also turn into a bed, which I'll show you how to do now. And as you can see, this is now set up for your bed. So how this works is I've just lowered the table into position. Uh, what that will then allow you to do is pull this out like so and then connect it up. So then you've got room for two here. And then you can see that you've got your little extender pieces here, should you want to make it into a big double bed, but nine times out of ten, you'll just have two here and then one on there. If you wanted to make it into a big double bed, all you need to do is pull this, this meets onto this side, that then drops down into that position, and you've got a big double bed here. Now finally, whilst I've got the lounge in, uh, in this setup, you can see that underneath your forward facing travelling seats, you've got your sergeant unit. This is the final bit to the vehicle. Your sergeant unit is in essence where everything, or where the, the vehicle's brain is, it's like the e-box. You can see that you've got your fuses located here, as well as your RCD breaker for if the vehicle ever trips. You've also got tank heaters and things like that, but you shouldn't need to click any of them. I don't advise clicking them. Everything that you need to know is located on the panel that we've already been in. Um, you will notice that you've got a system shutdown button here. You shouldn't need to click that. You should only need to click it if you're not using the vehicle for, let's say, six months. Um, but at the same time, it won't make a massive difference. If you click that, you'll then have to reset the entire system. So you should just leave it as it is. But as I mentioned, if anything trips or you blow a fuse, you're all the way here. It's all located in one um, position. So that concludes the handover video on the Swift Escape 624. I hope you enjoyed.